Okay, hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you two ways to optimize your photos for uploading to your website for optimum viewing and fast download speeds. Now, when preparing a photo for the web, it's totally different to preparing it for print because when we prepare it for print, we want a super high resolution, largest file size possible and the most amount of pixels. But for the website, it's totally different. You don't need that at all. Actually, you need the opposite. You need the smallest possible file size and the actual image dimension doesn't need to be massive because it's only going to be shown on the screen. So what you see down here, for example, this image is 8000 pixels long. Now, I don't need to upload an 8000 pixel image to my website because no one has a screen that big and it's never going to be shown that big. It's actually just going to be resized. So the other thing we look at is 300, this PPI, pixels per inch or DPI, dots per inch, depending on how you see it. This is irrelevant. This is only relevant for print. This is irrelevant when it comes to uploading to the internet because when people are viewing it on their computer screens, it will be automatically sized to the native resolution of that screen. Now that screen can be set at anywhere between 90 to 120 PPI. So it actually doesn't matter. If you set 300, it will just resize it to 120. So again, this is irrelevant. What's relevant are the pixel dimensions. And as I said, the file size. You want to get the right pixel dimension and the smallest possible file size while still maintaining image quality that you don't destroy the image and it looks all blocky or pixely. But the smallest possible file size and the reason is because uh, if you've got a massive file size two, three, four meg, then each time someone looks at your web page, they have to download that massive file size. And if you've got 10 of them, 10 images on there at uh, two meg each, it's going to take forever for your page to load. No one's going to wait around for that. And as I say, it's not necessary. So the first I'm going to show you is in Adobe Photoshop. You can also do the same in Adobe Lightroom. And then I'll show you if you don't have Adobe Photoshop or Lightroom, I'll show you how to do it in a free program called Earfan View. So this image is open in Adobe Photoshop. So if we go up to the image and the image size. So as I said, this image was shot on a Canon R5, so it is 8,192 pixels long and 5,464 deep. Now, I don't need that, as I said, you know, for viewing on the screen. Now, most, most people, if they've got um, HD screens, they're gonna be around 1,920 pixels on the horizontal and about 180 or something i think on the vertical so it's never going to be viewed any bigger if you've got 4k then obviously that's bigger so uh, what i tend to do when i upload my images to my website if i want to have them full screen then i usually find and i do the same for facebook too actually i usually size them at 2048 now it's important to have the resample checked okay because uh let me cancel that and go back if this is unchecked and we go to you see it doesn't even give me the option for pixels anymore because what that's going to do is if i for example want to make that smaller 40 it's made the image smaller for print but increased the dpi so it actually hasn't changed the number of pixels so what we want to do for web is we want to change the number of pixels so make sure the resample is set and I usually set to bicubic sharper reduction. So when you reduce the size, you want to sharpen it a little bit. And I let it do that. Or you can put it on auto if you want, but this is what I do. And I change that to 204A. I usually find that that's big enough for most screens and it even looks good on uh, some of the bigger 4K screens or the wider screens. So once I've done that, I just simply click OK and that has now resized my image now you can see down here it's changed to 2048 by 1366 it's a 300 dpi but it doesn't matter because as i said when it shows on the website they're going to redistribute those pixels to 120 or to 90 or whatever it is so you don't even need to touch that what you need to do is set the pixel width now when you've done that 
now what I do is I save as and um, I maybe save it in a, a separate folder you don't want to overwrite your original of course so I put it in a separate folder I click save and then when I come to the JPEG options I take it down usually I find around seven now you can see when you do that it gives you the file size so I usually don't take it below that because it doesn't make much difference second of all once you go below seven you will start to lose image quality now some images need to go higher if you've got a, an image that's um, black and white doesn't have a lot of color detail or you've got an image that um, there's a lot of mist uh, things like that you may find that when you go down to seven you get banding so in the sky so when you save it check it and if it looks bad go back and redo it again and just increase it but you can see as I see when you bring this down when you're on full size 2.3 megs way too big as soon as you take it down to 11 or 10 ideally you want to be below one meg smaller the better so as I say I usually do it around seven uh, in I think Lightroom you maybe need to take it down to about 60% or something like that so that typically works so now I've saved that if we go to my web one we hover over it you can see that is now 394 kilobytes 2048 pixels long now that is big enough for a full screen header and if we look on my website here all of these images here are full screen and they have all been saved at 2048 pixels long and are well under one meg so they load quickly and the slideshow runs quickly this is the best option if you're going to use it smaller like here then you can do the same thing if you're only going to use it here and nowhere else now if you're using wordpress like i am what you can do I usually save everything at 2048 and then if you're using Elementor for example if you insert the image here and then you set that image size in Elementor it usually it creates a copy of us with a smaller size so you don't actually need to upload multiple sizes but depends on how your website is configured if you're using a different model and it doesn't do that then you can also do the same thing if we um, Let's open the original of this again. Same image. There we go. You could do the same thing, only this time instead of 2048, you can make it 800 or 600 or 1200, whatever you want. So if the image is going to be full screen, I recommend at least, I ideally I find 2048, you can make it to 500 or even 3000, as long as you keep that file size down below one meg. If you're not Adobe Photoshop user, then the other one is this program here called Earfan View. You can get it free. I'll put a link down in the description to it. You can get it for free. So what you can do is open the image in Earfan View and What's good about Earfan View, well, you can do the same actually in Adobe Photoshop. I should go back a minute. What you can do is set up an action. Now, I've done that actually. If you look down here, I've got an action for my Facebook images. So I resize and I also add a copyright uh, on there and then I save and close. And you see down here, I've got actions as well to resize them for 1200 pixels smaller. Or well, this one's 2048 but without the um, copyright symbol for example so I've created all these actions and then when you create these actions you can just open all the images in Photoshop and just keep running the action or you can use the automate feature and do a batch conversion using that action so that's relatively easy or you can also do it here in Earfan view so you can open the image for example and then come to batch conversion and then you can add multiple images as I say I could for example add all of these let's select them all um, or add all there you go so I've added all of the images in this folder and then first of all 
your JPEG, so you want your output format to be in JPEG, obviously. You can batch conversion, you can batch rename, or you can do both. You can batch conversion and rename the results. So if you put this, the, the, uh, this symbol here, it keeps the original file name, and then you can put something in front to add to it. Or you can just do a simple batch conversion and save them with their original file names, but obviously you want to save them in a different folder. So if you come down here to the output folder, and here you select where you want them to be saved. If we come here, I'm going to navigate to this folder here. There's my web folder. So now you can see I've now got that web folder selected as my output folder. If I go to my JPEG options, you've got various options here. Keep, you want to keep or to get rid of all this stuff, I keep it. I always keep it. If it's going out on the internet, I never get rid of it. And there here you can set then the quality. So you can set it to 70 or 80. This is in percent. So this is slightly different to the other one because the in Photoshop it goes up to 12. So 7 is about 3 quarters of the way. So you can set it to about 70 or 80. You can set the file size but I don't do that because then if it forces it to that many of them can end up uh, looking really bad. I just let it save uh, 70 and then I go and look at them and if some of them look too big I may redo that. Okay, so that's set. And then the next thing you want to go to is advanced. Now this is where you set the size. So if you click this to resize, make sure you've got preserved aspect ratio and use resample function checked. Make sure these two are checked. And then I find the best thing to do is to set the long side to 2048. So whether it's a um, horizontal or a vertical images, image, the longest size will be set to 2048. And again, pixels. I sharpen it I usually set about 10 to sharpen it and here if you want to you can add a canvas to the end and you can add some overlay text which I've done here and then once all those are set so go for all your settings then you simply click OK and when all that is set start the batch and now we'll watch it work away it's pretty quick Down here it tells you 19 files processed, no errors, thankfully, one warning. The warning was probably that um, one of those existed because we, we we tried to overwrite one that was all, there you go, see, okay, destination file exists, replace. Now, where it says replace, so it just means that I have set the setting, let's go back and look at that again quickly um, just means that in advanced here I've got overwrite existing files if you don't want to do that make sure that's unchecked but I've got that checked because I had no problem doing that now oh, actually easier to do this now if we go to that web folder there we go if I go now just, just go back into Photoshop if I go to my web folder now you can see that uh, here I've also included a bit of canvas at the bottom and on that canvas I've put my website and a copyright symbol. So if and views really useful but as I say you can do that automatically in Photoshop. So if I just very quickly to finish up let's open my original file again. So you can see here I've got an action for Facebook and you can see here that I've set the image size as I've done here and I can add a text layer and I've set it to save in a folder especially for my Facebook photos so let's run that now it won't save it here for the simple reason what I've done is I haven't saved the action to flatten it because where I've added this here it's added it as a layer and I haven't set the action to flatten it because sometimes I might want to move it a bit so each image is very different and so I find that I first want to flatten it I first want to position it then I flatten it manually then I can continue with my action and that is now saved in my folder so that's how you do it in Photoshop 
Okay, I hope this has been useful for you and uh, if so, please give this video a like. Please subscribe to my channel if you're new here and check out some of my other videos. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.